This is part 35 of Angular 2 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss injectors in Angular. In part 32 of this video series, we discussed what is dependency injection and how it is implemented in Angular. There are two simple steps to use dependency injection in Angular. For example, let's say we have a component that has a dependency on a service and needs an instance of it. Now, in this case, we have our employee list component here, which has a dependency on employee service. Now, to use dependency injection, there are two simple steps. First, we register our service, in this case, employee service, with the Angular injector. And then within the component, we specify a dependency on the service using a constructor parameter like this. And that's it. Whenever an instance of this component is created, the Angular injector is automatically going to inject an instance into this component. So in this video, let's talk about this Angular injector. In Angular 1, we only had one global injector. But in Angular 2, we have a hierarchical injector tree. So as you can see here, we have one root injector at the root application level and an injector tree that parallels the application's component tree. So in short, we can say we have one root injector plus an injector at every component level. Now, for these injectors to be able to inject an instance of a service dependency, we will have to first register our service with these injectors. The availability of the service for injection depends on with which injector you have registered your service. For example, if we register our service with the root app injector, then that service is available for injection into all components across our entire application, including the lazy loaded module components. We didn't discuss what are lazy loaded modules. We'll discuss them in detail in our upcoming videos. For now, understand if we register a service with this root injector, then that service is available for injection to all components across our entire application, including the lazy loaded module components. Now, if we register our service with the injector at the app component level, that is at the root component level, then that service is available for injection to all components except lazy loaded module components. If we register our service with the injector at this component A level, then that service is available for injection only to this component, but not for components X, Y, and Z. On the other hand, if we register our service with the injector at this component X level, then that service is available for injection into component X, Y, and Z, but not component A. Now, let's understand how these hierarchical injectors work in Angular. Let's assume we have our service registered with this injector at component X level. And then let's say this component Z needs an instance of that service. So first, Angular is going to check its injector. Do you have the service registered with you? The answer is no. So that request is going to bubble up to its parent, in this case, component X. So it's going to ask the same question with the injector at this component level. Do you have the service registered with you? The answer is yes. So this injector is going to inject an instance of that service into this component Z, which needs it. And everything works as expected. Now let's assume this component needs an instance of that service. So first Angular is going to check its injector. Do you have the service registered with you? The answer is no. So the request bubbles up to its parent, which in this case is app component. So it's going to ask the same question. And again, the answer is no. So the request bubbles up further to its parent, which is root injector in this case. Again, the answer is no here. So this request is going to fail with that famous error, no provider for service. Now let's understand how we can register our services for dependency injection with these injectors in Angular. To register our service with the root app injector, just use the provider's property of ng module decorator. We know every Angular module will have a corresponding class and that class will be decorated with ng module decorator to turn it into an Angular module. So just use the provider's property of that ng module decorator to register your service with root app injector. On the other hand, 
If you want to register your service with an injector at a specific component level, then just use the provider's property of the component decorator. Now we know every Angular component has got a corresponding class and that class will be decorated with at component decorator. So just use the provider's property of at component decorator to register your service with an injector at a specific component level. Let's look at all these in action now. This is the same example that we worked with in our previous video and here we have our user preferences service which we are using both within our home component as well as within our employee list component. Now for this service that is for the user preferences service to be available both within the home component and employee list component we have registered it with the root app injector by using the providers property of ng module decorator. So if you look at our root module which is app.module.ts notice here we are using the providers property to register our user preferences service with the root app injector. So whenever the home component or employee list component needs an instance of it the root app injector is going to provide that. So everything works as expected. Now let's try to register our user preferences service with just the home component and to do that we can use the providers property of the component decorator of that component class. So let's do that. So first let's remove the provider from our root module app.module.ts and then let's go to our home component and then we can include the providers property within this component decorator. So let's include that here. Providers and then let's specify our user preference service there. And then if you look at our employee list component, notice here we don't have the providers property. So at the moment we have registered our service with the injector at this home component level. So the service will be available only for the home component and not for the employee list component. So when we navigate to employee list component, we should get that famous error, no provider for user preferences service. Let's actually prove that. Let's save our changes and reload. Notice the home component works as expected. Now let's navigate to employee list component. It doesn't display anything. Let's launch browser developer tools and investigate what's going on. We are on the console tab. We've got one error and look at what the error message says. We got that famous error. No provider for user preferences service and we know the reason why we are getting this error. At the moment we have this user preferences service registered with the injector at home component level and now our employee list component needs an instance of that service. So Angular is first going to ask its injector do you have the user preferences service registered with you? The answer is no. So the request bubbles up to its parent that is the injector at our root component level which is app component and again the answer here is no. So the request further bubbles up to its parent. Again here the answer is no. So we get that famous error no provider for user preferences service. One way to fix this error is by registering our service again with the injector at our employee list component as well. But that's not a very good thing to do because by doing so we are effectively registering our service twice once with the injector at home component level and the second time with the injector at our employee list component level. By registering a service more than once, we no longer get a singleton, that is a single instance of the service. When we don't have a singleton, then we will not be able to share data between these components. Let's actually prove that. So at the moment, we already have the user preferences service registered with the injector at home component level. Now let's register that with the injector at employee list component as well by including the providers property within the component decorator of our employee list component class. Let's save our changes and reload our web page. Notice the home component works and employee list component also works as expected. 
But the problem at the moment is we no longer get a single instance of the service because we have registered our service twice, once with the injector at the home component level and a second time with the injector at the employee list component level. And this is how it works. When the home component requires an instance of the service, Angular is first going to check with the injector at that home component level. Do you have the service registered with you? The answer is yes. So this injector is going to create an instance of the service and inject that into the home component. And the same thing happens with employee list component. When this employee list component needs an instance of the service, it's first going to check with the injector at that component level, do you have the service registered? The answer again in this case is yes. So this injector is going to create a new instance of the service and inject that into this employee list component. So now we have two instances. One instance created by the injector at the home component level and another instance created by the injector at employee list component level. Because we don't have a single ton, we will not be able to share data. Let's actually prove that. At the moment, we are on the employee list component and we see the default color, which is orange. Now let's change this to yellow. Now if we have a single instance between home and employee list component, then when we navigate to the home component, we should see this yellow color and not orange. But look at what happens. When we go to the home page, we see the default color, orange. That's because at the moment we have two instances of user preference service. One instance provided by the Angular injector at home component level and the second instance provided to the employee list component by the injector at that employee list component level. To properly fix this, we may register a service with the injector at the parent component level. In our case, the parent for home component and employee list component is the root component. When we register our service with the injector at the root component, then that service is available for injection into all components except lazy loaded module components. If you want your service to be available for all components, including the lazy loaded module components, then register your service with the root app injector. The general guidance for service registration is if you want to restrict your service availability to a specific component, then register your service with the injector at that component level. But if you want the service to be available for all components, then register it with the root app injector using the provider's property of ng-module decorator. Now let's register our service once with the root injector. So first let's remove the service registration from our employee list component by removing this provider's property. Let's do the same within our home component as well. So let's remove the provider property and then let's register our service with the root injector. So let's include user preference service as part of the provider's property within this at ng module decorator. So at the moment we have our service registered with the root injector. So let's save all these changes and reload our web page. Notice at the moment on the home component we see the default color which is orange. Now let's change this to yellow. Now if we have a single instance being shared between home component and employee list component, when we navigate to employee list component, we should see this yellow color. So let's navigate to employee list component, we see the yellow color. And now when we come back to home, we see that same yellow color. If we change this to pink, and when we go back to the home component, we should see that pink color. So at the moment, we have a single instance being shared between home and employee list component. Now let's understand how our application is working with the help of this diagram. At the moment, we have our user preferences service registered with the root app injector. When this home component needs an instance of that service, now first Angular is going to check with the injector at that component level. Do you have the service registered with you? The answer is no. So the request bubbles up to its parent. So Angular is going to check with the injector at this component level. Again, the answer is no. So it bubbles up further to the root app injector. We have the service registered here. So it's going to create an instance of the service and inject that into our home component. When we navigate to employee list component, this component also has a dependency on the service. So first Angular is going to check with the injector at that component level. Do you have the service registered? The answer is no. So the request bubbles up to its parent. Again here the answer is no. So it ends up with the root injector. 
root injector already has an instance of user preferences service. So it's going to inject that same instance into employee list component as well. So here we have a singleton and with the help of that single instance of the service, we are able to share data between our home component and employee list component. Thank you for listening and have a great day.